Welcome to Haskell for Imperative Programmers. This course uh, is aiming to teach Haskell and functional programming uh, to people who already have some experience in imperative languages. So let's go over the prerequisites. Of course, you need to have some knowledge of imperative programming, so C, C++, Python, Java, whatever. Any of those will do. You should have some basic theory on programming languages. So you should know what types are and how they work, how evaluation of expressions work, and what the difference between a compiler and an interpreter is, for example. You should have the Haskell toolchain installed. So GHC, GHCI, and Cabal should all be installed on your computer. So, okay, let's look at what functional programming actually is and what it means to have a functional program. Well, in functional programming, and especially in Haskell, we are interested in pure functions, meaning functions in the mathematical definition that they have some input, some arguments, and then have a result, and nothing else. We are also interested in immutable data, meaning that our data types, whatever they might be, cannot be changed in place. Those uh, two attributes, pure functions and immutable data, lead to no or less side effects. Um, side effects are especially dangerous uh, and are very hard to verify. Their absence is very hard to verify, um, which is why we don't really want them. Functional programming in general is more declarative or is declarative instead of imperative and the difference we will highlight in just a second. Functional programs in general are easier to verify, and that is a huge part of functional programming since we can actually mathematically prove the correctness of our algorithms. So let's look at the difference between a declarative and an imperative approach uh, when comparing them on a function that computes the sum of an array or list of numbers. So in the imperative approach on the right, we can see that for each step, that we do, we tell the program what to do. So we say, set the sum to zero, then set i to zero, then iterate until a certain condition is met, and take every single value of that array, uh, which of course is dependent on this i index, and then add it to the sum. And after that, of course, return the sum. So what we are doing is not give a definition of what it means to be a sum or what a sum actually is, we just describe an algorithm that can produce a sum. Now, in the declarative approach, we actually define or sort of define what it means uh, to have a sum. So we say that a sum of an empty list is just zero and a sum with a list with at least one element x is that element x plus whatever the rest of the sum is. Uh, now, using some fancy tricks like partial function application and the folding function, uh, we can have a much more, uh, well, a much shorter uh, function definition. But what that actually means, we will learn later in the course. So one very important thing of Haskell is that it's lazy evaluated. Lazy evaluation is something you need to get your head around when working in Haskell. So let's look at something that is strictly evaluated. Let's assume that the functions func1, func2, and func3 all take one year to finish. In a strictly evaluated uh, language, like for example C or Java, um, the example on the right would take three years to finish. Because of course we first evaluate func1, that will take a year, then we evaluate func2 and then func3. After that we do this if then else, which probably won't take that long. So the whole, you know, the whole function takes three years to finish. How does it work in Haskell? Well, if Haskell is lazy evaluated, which it is, then it works like this. We have the definitions x, y, and z. On the, on the left, and those are defined as the result of certain functions. Now, they are not evaluated right when they occur in the code, because they don't have to right now, because Haskell looks at, okay, what has to be evaluated in order to get the result, and it first uh, observes that, yeah, well, we need z, because otherwise we can't do this if then else. So z is evaluated, which takes one year. And then we either evaluate x or y, which takes another year. But this algorithm will only take two years. So, 
I mean, that is some performance improvement, I guess. But the very important thing to, to understand here is that things only get evaluated if they're needed. Of course, you could write the example on the on the right a bit differently. You uh, could replace x and y with just the function, uh, the functions in the if then else, and it would also just take two years. But that's not the point here. It's important to understand what the difference between lazy evaluation and strict evaluation is. Okay, so those are the basics of Haskell. And uh, following from here, we will learn function definitions, lists, and uh, defining your own data types. <laughs>